Welcome to the Viper Web Leaderboard Trainer. The Viper Web Leaderboard application is started from the Viper Tournament Manager. So from the Viper TM menu item at the top of the screen, you'll find if the license is set for leaderboard, you'll find a leaderboard menu item that has two options. One for create edit templates and one for select event to actually select event and start a leaderboard display. But before you can start a leaderboard display, you've got to actually create templates, layouts of the display screen for the event that you want to display. So selecting the create event display screen will open the leaderboard template builder. If you have any templates already built, they would appear in the list where you can uh, select and edit them. But if you do not have any current templates built, you first must enter a name for a template and create a template. So entering a name for a template and pressing the Save Template button will then create a template you can begin working with for a layout. So once your template is created, you can then select the Design Edit button to actually begin working with the layout. And note that the trash can will delete any layouts that you no longer want. On the Template Layout screen, there are four main components that make up a leaderboard. The first one is the player grid. This would be the grid, which would include the player names, uh, you know, scores, starting times, starting tees. Uh, all of these fields can be selected to be added to the display. Then there are two graphics fields, which are just windows, graphics windows that will open on top of the display wherever you position them and will um, just rotate through whatever graphics that you drop into those uh, graphic panels. The fourth component is the background which is the uh, overall background that is behind the scoreboard display and the background can be one or more photos. You can have multiple photos and it will scroll through those photos at, at whatever time interval you set and we will review that uh, as we get to that component. You also have the option to sort the display uh, by the team, gross score, or gross place, net place, player names, starting T, starting time, depending on what type of board you would have. So since we're going to be building a, a gross board, we'll go ahead and set the display to sort by gross, and we will begin uh, laying out the player grid. So for the player grid, we're going to select player names because we want the player names to be shown on the display. Uh, we want the gross score to be shown on the display, the team number, and we will also include the gross place. When you have selected the fields that you want to be included in the grid, you can drag and drop these fields, the column names, into whatever order you want them to, to be displayed in. So we want the team number to be the first um, column in the grid, so we drag it to the top, and now the team number will be first, player player second, gross score third, and the gross place will be the fourth column. To work with columns, you click on the Properties button. When you click the Properties button, you're now getting all of the adjustment capabilities that you have for that column, for the team number column. And each column consists of two parts. There will be a header, which would be the label that is on top of the column and the column itself which would be the data that's in the column and in this case it will be the team numbers. So we'll begin by um, adjusting the header for the team number column. So for the header you have the option to make the background of the header either transparent or solid and in this case we're going to make the background of the header uh, to be transparent and the caption will be whatever uh, will print in the header so we're just going to change this to just be team number sign that's this is now what will appear in the header of this column team number column and uh, we've set it to be transparent so we need to set the text color to whichever color we want to choose and we're going to choose yellow because yellow stands out very well on top of a photo and once you've picked a color you need to press the choose button to actually select that color so we've now selected the color uh, we are going to leave the, uh, we'll set the font to be Arial. Uh, we'll set the size of the font to be 22 point, and this just takes some trial and error working with the application. We're going to set the header font to be bold, and we want the alignment for the team column to be centered. We want the team number caption centered 
over the top of the column. The other component that you have for each column is a percent of the display width. So what percent of the total grid do we want the team number to be? And bear in mind that we have four columns that we're going to be adding to this display. So what percentage of that width of the display do you want the team number to be? And we're going to set this, uh, the team number display to be 10% of the width. So once we have the header um, set, we will um, move to the column, say yes, I want to save the properties that I've set for the header. And how do we want the column to be displayed? To display? Uh, I'm going to set the column display to be solid, to have a solid background color. So I need to check, select both the background color and for team number we will set uh, the background to be orange, choose that color, set the text color to be black on top of the orange background color, choose that color, select the font for the team number. Uh, we're only going to have uh, you know a few numbers in each column so we could set the font size to be quite a bit bigger than the header so we'll set it to be 36 point bold, also Arial and we will center the team numbers in the column. And uh, the other option that you have for the columns, actually several options that you have for the columns, is to place a border around the column. And so we'll set a border line to be four pixels in width, and the border color of black is fine. So that's just going to draw a line around each box of that column of the team numbers. You can also uh, choose the rows to be alternating colors and you know light green dark green and then each row of of that column would alternate colors but we're not going to use that in this case we're just going to leave uh, the, all rows to be the same orange color with a black border for the team number column we can now move to the players column clicking the properties box for the players column we'll ask you if you want to save your settings for the column properties for the team number. We're going to say yes, we want to save that. And now we're starting to lay out the properties for the player name column. The process is the same in that we need to set the header properties for the name column and then set the uh, uh, body properties for the column. So we're going to set the, the header to be the same, transparent, aerial, 22 point bold, yellow text color. Uh, the caption will say players at the top of the grid and we're going to set the player to be 65 percent of the width. So for the player column or body of the column, players column, uh, we're also going to set the names to be show up with a transparent background so we can see through the grid. We're going to pick a really bold font for the names, a balloon, XBD, BT is a, is, is a very bold font. We're going to set 36 point. We're going to set the name color to be also yellow uh, and we'll set a a border around the names, four pixels, uh, same black color. For the gross score column, we're going to set the header properties to be the same yellow header, and we're going to set the body of the column, the column properties, to be a little bit different in that we'll uh, have a large font size, we'll have a solid background with a white background, and uh, we'll set the text color to be blue, and we'll choose that, and we'll set the column width a little bit wider, 15%, for the gross score and a, a one a four pixel black border around the, each box. And for the gross place we'll again set the uh, column header properties to be the same. For the body we're going to use a solid background with a little bit lighter color of uh, tan I guess and a black uh, text color. 10% place is the caption above the column centered or excuse me uh, yeah, we'll set it to be centered above the column and a uh, black uh, four pixel line around each box. Before we preview the um, grid, we're going to set the background properties um, for the display, uh, which allows you to select uh, any photo to be uh, dropped into the background. Actually, you can select multiple photos and then uh, set the timer for how long each photo uh, will be displayed. In this case, we've got an interval of uh, 10 uh, seconds for the uh, display, but we're only going to pick one background graphics for this uh, display. But like I say, you could pick multiple uh, photos, and uh, each one would, in this case, with a 10 second setting, each will stay up 10 seconds, flip to the next, stay up 10 seconds, flip to the next. Once it gets through all the photos, it just starts over again. So to uh, pick a new photo, you just click the Add New Image button, which brings up a file search utility where you can go out and browse through your own system to 
uh, find a photo that you want to use. It supports high quality photos, good photos. So, you know, 1028 by 768, 1024 by 768 for a size, pixel size for the photos is good. Um, it will support much higher resolution photos. Uh, the, the problem with uh, too big of a too high of a resolution photo is the file size will get too big. So uh, probably the best resolution would be somewhere around 10, 1024 by 768. So we're just going to pick a, a background photo here, upload it. Uh, once it's been uploaded, uh, it'll show the photo uh, as being included in the display, and we can actually now preview uh, the display to see how it looks. So when you press the preview button, you'll get a, a display to show you what the layout will look like. There are no records uh, being selected yet because you haven't selected an event to display. This is just basically showing how the layout will look. So if you click on the header area, you can drag the grid that you've designed, the player grid, the uh, score grid around, and uh, your mouse will, uh, placing it near the corner, will give you the option to resize it to any size that you want. So we'll size this to take up a uh, pretty good part of the whole screen and um, once we've got this layout the way that we want it we can then just save the uh, display closing the screen will save it so now that our we have our template laid out we can now go back to the Viper TM leaderboard menu and go to select event where we can now select from the event list to um, choose our event to be displayed scores to be displayed once you've selected the event, then you need to choose the template. So we've selected our gross team score template, and pressing the Save button will then save that template to be a part of this display. So that now pressing the leaderboard will actually bring up the leaderboard with the records from this outing included in our grid. So now you can see the... Um, scoreboard display that we've created. This event is now available on the internet. This is the link uh, to the uh, display. That link can be delivered to anyone. Anyone with a, any device connected to the internet can bring this up. You can bring it up on a smartphone, tablets, uh, computers, TVs. So uh, TVs in the clubhouse, no wiring requirements needed. Just need to be able to browse to the web to get to this address and start the display and it will run. The toggle screen uh, option will then toggle the screen to go to full screen so you don't have the header showing. So we've now got the display taking up the full screen and you notice there's a, a message comes up to tell you to press the escape key to toggle the screen back so that you're able to <coughs> close the display. But this is now the full display running uh, for this outing. Just a couple of notes to understand that uh, when you have multiple round events, two or three round events, the display will automatically, uh, the scores will automatically be the total of all rounds, current total of rounds. Uh, you do have the option to display each round individually, but by default it will show the total scores for all rounds to date. That's the same for leaderboards. When you build a leaderboard, you have the ability to build a variance from par leaderboard uh, showing uh, current scores through six holes or whatever, however many holes uh, individuals or teams have played. And those uh, variance leaderboards are also uh, cumulative if it's a multi-round event. So uh, it would show that somebody is uh, minus six through four holes of the current round, but that would be including the uh, minus two of the current round plus minus four from the prior round. So it's always showing you the current variance for the total event and total of number of rounds that have been played up to the, that point. When you're ready to shut the display down, just press the escape key and just close the web page to shut down the event. So just to review the types of boards that you can create, uh, we have starting time and starting T available to be included as a column, which means that you can uh, create starting boards prior to an event to display starting times or starting T's. So when you're displaying a uh, starting board, then you would uh, change the sort criteria. So Sorting by player name would give you a alpha list of starting tees or starting times, and uh, selecting starting tee or starting time, depending on the type of start, uh, starting tee for shotguns, time for time starts, would give you a pairings list. And as mentioned, uh, you can do live leaderboards, so you can do variants uh, from par and have multiple columns. If I had a, a three-round event and I'm showing the display after round two, I would select round one variants, round two variants, 
and total variance to show the variance for each round plus the uh, total variance from par for the current leaderboard that may be being displayed or optionally showing uh, round one score, round two score, gross or net plus the current variance for the the current round uh, and so there's a, a variety of uh, ways that you can build boards uh, for pretty much any kind of an event and the final thing we haven't shown for uh, the display capabilities would be the graphics windows that you can use and you have two of these that work both the same way so uh, you can pick any number of graphics to, to use in an event or you can actually go out and just uh, select a folder and grab all of the images in that folder uh, and then set the time for how long it will uh, each image will stay up on the screen when you click the add a new image you will get a browser to go out and browse your system and select you know one or more graphics that you want to be included in the display open them uh, upload them then add those images uh, to the display you have the option to manage them to delete them if you don't like them uh, you can view what each one looks like or is going to look like in the display uh, and so these images will now be included uh, in the layout. So if I preview my template now, uh, you can see that there is a graphics panel in here. We can size this to be any size that we want it to be, uh, position it anywhere that we want, and uh, it will just flip through the graphics. So if I've got sponsor logos in here, if I've built um, actual ads advertising of some type, uh, and I want that to be the major feature of the display. I can make my score grid a lot smaller and make my advertising or ad panels a lot bigger. So and you bear in mind you have two of these to work with, so you can add two of these windows to the display. And these will take uh, very high quality graphics, including photos as well. So you could actually have photos of uh, take photos of the live event as it's going on and then drop those into one of the graphics windows and have the uh, event photos flipping through as the scores are displaying. The Graphics 1 and 2 panels provide many options for your display templates. They can be used for contest winner, prize payoff announcements with any event, and any program that can create slides such as Microsoft PowerPoint or Publisher can be used to create the slides. Viper Leaderboard can also be used for slideshow only displays. If you uncheck all of the columns from the column selector, the player grid will be removed from the display. This allows you to create displays with just the one or two graphics panels. So displays can be created as clubhouse bulletin boards with club news, announcements, food and beverage menus, golf shop specials, whatever your imagination can come up with. And any device with web connectivity can then be used to show the displays anywhere in the world. This concludes the Viper Web Leaderboard Display tutorial. Thanks for watching.